Hi and welcome to this video on the skeletal system, endochondral ossification. Now, endochondral ossification produces most bones of the skeleton, including the bones of the upper and lower limbs, the pelvis, the vertebrae, and the ends of your clavicles or collarbones. Now, endochondral ossification begins with a highland cartilage model, typically between the 8th and 12th week of development of the fetus, you have chondroblasts secreting the, the cartilage matrix around which you have the perichondrium that forms. In the second step, this is where cartilage begins to calcify and a periosteal bony collar forms around the diaphysis, which is here, of the bone. Here chondrocytes produce holes in the matrix. That matrix begins to calcify and the chondrocytes will then die. As that happens, blood vessels are growing in towards the cartilage. Osteoblasts will develop and begin secreting osteoid. It will form that layer of osteoid around the diaphysis called the periosteal bone collar or the bony collar. In the third step, this is the formation of the primary ossification center. It happens with the periosteal bud, which is a growth of capillaries, which you can see, and osteoblasts. The osteoblasts produce the osteoid on the cartilage template to form the primary ossification center. Most primary ossification centers are formed by the 12th week of development. The bone development will extend in both directions towards the epiphysis. You will also see the epiphyseal blood vessels that are beginning to form in the epiphysis or the ends of the long bone. That happens in both the proximal and distal. That is going to set the stage for the formation of the secondary ossification centers. So step four is the formation of the secondary ossification centers in the epiphyses. You can see those here and there. The hyaline cartilage again in these centers will calcify and degenerate. The chondrocytes become trapped, they die, and then you get the osteoblast starting to secrete the osteoid that later calcifies. The blood vessels are entering. Again, they are carrying nutrients and then away wastes. The formation of this secondary ossification center allows the epiphysis to harden and calcify. In addition, you have osteoglast that will resorb some bone matrix and bone resorption is where osteoclast will secrete hydrochloric acid and enzymes and it will dissolve the bone. You can see that here in the formation or the beginnings of the formation of the medullary cavity. In step five, the bone is replacing all the cartilage except for the articular cartilage and the epiphyseal plates, what you know as the growth plates in children. You can still see the medullary cavity in the diaphysis of the long bone. You can see compact bone, the periosteum around the outside, and you can also see the spongy bone in the epiphysis. This is where you will find the red bone marrow, whereas yellow bone marrow is found in the medullary cavity. Finally, the last step is the epiphyseal plates ossify. Now this is later in age, typically 18 years old or older. It happens when you are quote unquote done growing. The epiphyseal plates will ossify. Now the epiphyseal plates are responsible for interstitial growth, which is a type of growth in which the bones lengthen. They are not responsible for appositional growth, which is the growth in girth or diameter of a bone. In the epiphyseal plates they will ossify to form the epiphyseal line which is in all adults typically at the end of puberty 
it has been as young as 10 and as old as 25.